Hello. This half term you're going to do a project based on the work of an artist called Mark Powell. As you can see from this first, it's an envelope that's been split open to make the area of the paper bigger. And he's used a ballpoint, a black ballpoint pen to draw a portrait straight onto the used envelope. This is actually a set of postcards pushed together and again a black ballpoint drawing on top of those postcards. This is some pages of text, some writing with a drawing on the top and again an open letter with a ballpoint drawing on. Page from a book. So again, this last one, an envelope that's been split to make the piece of paper bigger. So what you will need to do, the first thing, is collect up a pile of used envelopes from your house. You will also need to find a ballpoint pen, preferably black, but it does need to be ballpoint. The next thing is to pick one of the envelopes and draw out a photograph onto it. You just draw the general areas, not lots of detail to start with. You need to find a photo, a good one of yourself preferably, or a member of your family, that's got lots of detail in, so you can see the skin, the textures, the clothing, all in detail. You will then start to add detail to various sections. Here you can see the texture that's trying to be copied. This is my photo of me on holiday. And here I've started drawing it out. So the first part, starting at the top, I'm looking at the texture of the hat. It's kind of a tweedy texture. So that's reflected in the kind of marks that I make. using those marks, stippling, using those marks to give a sense of what the texture is of the fabric and also to give shading. Here you can see a lot of the detail starting to appear. Next thing is to start adding detail in, in particular areas of the shading. So in the ear, you can see that I've marked out the areas that are gonna be light and dark. Then to start shading it in, a very different technique from the hat. This is a continuous tone style of shading. Remember with the ballpoint pen, you can't rub it out. So, always make things lighter than you think they're going to be because you can make them darker but you can't go the other way. And remember, any areas that you want to leave light, very light, you just have to make sure you don't put any pen on them. Again, you can't rub it out, you can't go back. So you can see the finished detail on the ear. Now starting to shade on the face. This is the shadow that's coming off the sunglasses, the arm of the sunglasses onto the face. So obviously that's gonna be darker. But think of the direction of the surfaces. So the bits I'm drawing at the minute, that's the side of my face. It curves round from my eyes. And then the side of the face goes down. So make the lines follow 
the direction of the plane that you're shading in. So here it's going round the side of the face. This helps to give things form. That's three-dimensional shape shown in your drawing. Also remember to leave lighter areas. So you're not just filling it in in a solid way. You're giving it some texture. Particularly on me, I have some wrinkles on the side of my eyes there. So I need to make sure I leave lighter parts that actually indicate this texture, this shape. One of the trickier parts I'm going to have here is the fact that I have a beard. So I'm going to have to indicate not just the skin and the tones of the skin, but try to show the difference of the hair as well on my face. Obviously, this applies to the top of your head. You need to find ways of rendering, of showing that it's hair rather than anything else. So the way you draw the pattern, the texture, the tones, that all indicates what sort of surface that you're drawing. So again, showing the plane of the face, clearly one of my more exciting wrinkles coming down the side. Showing the direction of where the face is going, where the skin is going. And then other types of rendering to make sure that there's some indication that there's a beard there as well as a tone and a texture. On the forehead, this is the one of the darkest areas on the drawing. There's two textures going on. There's one that's going across the forehead and you can see the lines following that curve round. There's also the one coming down from the hat. That line there is to show a lighter area, which I will come to in a bit. There's a texture at the top, which is the hat texture, and a texture on the forehead, which is just, as I say, following the lines around across. It's not clear on the photo where those end exactly, so there's parts where I sort of blend those two textures together, but it is quite dark and it gives that softer edge to it. So here, shading in the lighter area, I will go over this darker later on, but it's giving me a structure to what I'm doing. So the lines are following in the same direction as on the rest of the forehead. They're just lighter. So speed it up a little bit, starting to draw more detail in, starting to get more texture in. Different kinds of lines for different objects. So obviously the glasses, they have a very hard edge. They're a very mechanical object, very solid edge, very well defined. Other parts can be much softer. This is where those textures are overlapping. Be careful with the ballpoint on, especially on some of these papers. It can damage the surface a bit, so don't be too rough with it. So 
So I've got that lighter area, but it's not entirely light. It does have some darker bits. And you can see there, starting the bridge of the nose, those, the curve is shorter. Just here. So I've marked on the areas on the glasses of the different shades. I've done these lines quite hard because I know that most of the areas are going to be really dark. Obviously with other areas, and I'll come on to the nose bit in a minute, you do the structure lines lighter because you might be able to see them afterwards. That might not be a problem, but you don't want heavy lines that you're just filling in unless it's an area like this where it's obviously dark. This speeded up just shows you how it's shaded in. So shading in the sunglasses, you can't actually see my eyes in the photo. I've picked an angle for the shading and I'm sticking to this on both lenses. You can see it's a roughly 45 degree angle and all my strokes within the lenses are in that direction and then I just have to vary the strokes or layer them up to make the lights and the darks. On the other lens you can see a few bits through on the bridge of the nose but when I come to shade that other lens as well that will follow exactly the same angle as the first one. And some of the shading areas will be very similar as well. And obviously every so often I just check the angle, go back to the first one, just check that I'm stroking in the same angle to make sure that they match. And you can see I've got the light in the dark areas roughly the same in each lens because a pair of glasses will reflect roughly the same thing in each lens. The bridge of the nose starting to get some shading in there. You can see how it follows the shape of the nose round. So it slopes down on the side. So one thing I noticed on my drawing was that the light area on the hat was actually much too light. What you need to do is constantly review your drawing. You can step back from it. You can take a break, have another look at it when you come back and just look at the areas that you've done just to see how they work. So I'm starting to add a bit more texture a bit more shading into the lighter part to make sure it's all balanced. This is the picture sideways, looks a bit strange, but it's the jacket collar. The jacket has a weave to it and I'm using that weave as sort of telling me what kind of texture, what kind of pattern that I'm going to draw. So I'm following that weave and I'm using the different weight of the pen, just pushing harder to get lighter and darker lines. I've got a little section in the middle there where the lines don't quite meet. That's just giving me a highlight area. And then on the shoulder, I'm following the same direction. I've got a light patch on the shoulder, which I've already marked off. And then as it comes down, it gets darker. And so I'm just following those lines, but keeping the lines going exactly the same way it shows you that it's the same kind of fabric than these things go together. Underneath my jacket, I've got a jumper on. It's got a similar texture to the hat. So I'm using a similar hatching technique on the jumper to give it that texture. This is obviously speeded up. The beard. So again, speed it up. I'm following the lines following the lines of the direction of the beard hair. What I will do is go over this with more angled lines. At the moment it looks much too neat. I'm going to go over the top of that with some other parts that show different angles and more 
complicated hair. Same sort of technique applies to your hair. So follow the general direction of the hair and then you can draw more complicated, more textured parts on top. So here's the finished drawing. There's parts of it that I'm not so pleased with, but generally I'm quite happy with that. I think it gives a really good impression of what's going on. So I know what you're saying. You're saying, uh, he can't draw eyes. Well, OK, so I took a photo of my eyes just to show you that I can. So here's a close up of my eyes. I've got another envelope, roughly the same shape as the photo. And I've sketched the eyes on. What you can see is the iris. The iris is a circle and it's overlapped by the eyelids. So you can very rarely see the whole circle, but the whole circle is there. I've sketched it in. Also the proportions. The width of an eye is pretty much the same as the gap in between. So you've got that gap is the same as the width of the eye. And obviously both eyes should be pretty much the same width. So I've put the general structure in. And as you can see, I've done the irises. I've probably done them a little stronger than you would do them just so that you can see them very clearly. But you can do all of that in because you're going to shade over it. So most of those curved bits will go. So here, adding detail in. Again, speed it up. Detail in the iris. Look at the direction. The direction it's coming out from the middle. So draw in the direction of whatever it is you're looking at. In this case, the iris coming out from the middle. If you look in the pupil of the eye and also the top of the iris just there, you can see that I've left white areas. I've drawn round a shape and I've left it white and I'm making sure that stays there. You need some nice highlights. Remember, you cannot rub this pen out. So you need to remember these highlights before you start drawing. And the white of the eye, again, you need some shading in there, but it has a direction. Remember, the eye is basically a sphere, so you're shading round that sphere. So other parts to it. You can see now I'm doing the eyebrow, following the eyebrow line, sort of drawing each hair. And you can see round the eye, I follow the direction of the shapes. I've added some wrinkles in, which you probably don't have. Eyelashes. You can't really see that's the rest of that circle now shaded over it on the irises. So, just finishing touches to the drawing. I've done lots of shading around it. You can see round the socket, the eye socket is sort of spherical. So I'm shading round it just to follow that shape round, round the bridge of the nose. Across the top, again, curving round, following it. Or going across the plane to show the direction of it. I've also added some other stippling on, some different texture, the stippling just to give a bit more texture to the skin, just to show what's going on. Remember those directions. So, the two finished drawings. Envelopes with drawings on, in the style of Mark Powell. So this is what you need to do. One, Research the life and work of Mark Powell. Print out three or four of his pieces done on used envelopes. He has drawn on other things, painted on things, so just make sure they're in this style. Two, collect a pile of used envelopes. Anything will do, any size, you can always sort of tear them open to make them bigger or just use sections. Maybe uh, you're getting some Amazon deliveries, you can use parts of that as well. Three, find a black ballpoint pen or another colour, but it must be ballpoint. You're drawing with ballpoint, not with a fibre tip or anything like that. You want to have a drawing in ballpoint pen. Four, stick the printouts and a paragraph about Mark Powell in your book. Five, find a good detailed photo of you or a member of your family. 
something where you can see the textures, the tones, the skin qualities and the like. Six, make a pen drawing of the photo on one of the envelopes. This should take you at least two hours, at least. I think mine took me probably three, four hours to do. So take your time with this. Seven, send me a photo of your drawing when it's complete and then stick it in your book. Eight, create another pen drawing from another photo. Maybe just a detail this time, kind of like I did with the eyes. Nine, repeat a number of times and stick them all in your book. You're trying to sort of make a collection of these things and you should find that as you go on, your handling of the pen, your tones, your textures, your understanding of how these things work will get better and better. So this should be a good set of drawings, at least six, I would imagine. This should take you up to half term. So take your time with this and get really, really good at these. And remember to send them through to me when you do them. Thanks for looking at the video. Hope you've enjoyed this and I hope you're gonna like the work. Hope you're all keeping well. See you soon.